Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Infinifactory. We have now unlocked the Arthropos station. So the last set of levels is upon us and like I mentioned last time, if you've been enjoying these videos, show some love, leave a like. As always, thank you so much for your support on these videos. Let's go and play this new puzzle. By the way, the mission briefing, he was just talking about how he's made some new tools for us to use. And I think we get two of them in this one puzzle right here. So this one is called Landing <laughs> Alignment Guide. Sounds interesting. Sounds like something that might be big in size. Uh, that's the output. We've got these things sitting there in the middle. And that's... Oh, are we like colouring them? That sounds about right, doesn't it? Okay, so this thing comes through in the shape that it needs to be when it's over here. So we're probably going to end up using uh, rotation and stuff like that. Let's have a look around. Let's listen to Ortis. Alright. Time to show off my latest creations. I call this the counter. Have you ever wanted to trigger a sensor on every other block? Well, you are in for a treat. Basically, I actually have. the counter <laughs> is an intelligent sensor which will trigger on every two, three, four, or however many blocks you want. There is also the painter. You can selectively paint parts of a product or material by passing it by a painter. I guess the counter is technically optional. But you definitely need to use the painter to build this. Right, so if we pass it by, it paints. Now, just looking at the block, I can't help but feel it paints on the side with that grill. And probably not from above. Now, having a look here as well, the counters are there. These look really cool. Let's chuck one of those down. This has actually been something I've wanted to use before. And, wow, that is quite quite the thing right there. How many can it count up to? Nine times. That is a very nice customization. And the sensor is on the opposite side. So I'm guessing maybe it's these bits here you hook up the conduit to. You might not be able to hook it up to the back actually. So obviously we can use that to make this uh, a little bit easier on ourselves. I can't help but feel that we want to run it by the white one all the way across. Also, should we check the other side of this and see <laughs> what's on there? Okay, so that side's playing. Yeah, so we'll drop it down or rotate it at least. The place we want to rotate it to is in line with this. So our first block to be placed down. Oh yeah, it reset all of these down here as well. Is uh, some form of rotation and then we'll have conveyors down here as well. So it will go onto there. I'm not sure if it will rotate immediately because these blocks are probably not actually in the way. Um, and then it's going to have a gap of two, so we can put one there, and we'll probably put just another one there so it drops down safely. And something like that should bring it along. I'm not sure what the gap is supposed to be. Let's just see if that... Oh, wait, what? I missed a gap. <laughs> How terrible. Let's put that... Oh, put that back there. Silly little mistake. There we go. Off it goes. Down it falls, and it's going to paint that side, right? Yes. Okay, so that's a really good start. That makes a lot of sense. We'll then obviously rotate it to bring it around to this side. Well, we need to make one pass across. And then, to me, that says go up and over and then down. Now, I'm just thinking... I'm just thinking, is the counter useful in any way on this level? I can't think of a way to use it immediately. So I'm going to guess that maybe it's not, but it might be useful in other ones. And another issue I see here is that if we want to run it by and then drop it down, we shouldn't do it on the same side. We should run it by on this side, rotate it, drop it down on that side. That sounds about right to me. Okay, so let me lay down a whole bunch of conveyors and rotators and we'll see if that works. Okay, this is as far as we've got. I've decided to do the up bit on that side first just because we need to raise this by one block in order to send it across the side. And it's not like we can raise it up by one block over here. So it made sense to go up first and then to turn it around. Because when we drop it down, we can drop it to the correct height, right? And the question is, just how do we want to go about doing that? So let's see this thing in action. Been using a minimal amount of blocks again. So it's going to go up and we've got a leeway of like two blocks here. So that means we can actually attach a block on top of this. We'd need one up here to nudge it along. And maybe... Maybe the block here is a rotator, or even we have like some sort of rotation on the side. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to rotate this, but basically, if we can get it to rotate and be pushed with just a couple of blocks, 
and it falls into the right position to be at this height and then go straight across, that's obviously going to be the most optimal way to do it. Okay, and with that block there, I think we've got this. So I tried a whole bunch of different things. And I tell you what, that block there doesn't need to be there anymore. That's a hangover from what I was trying before. There we go. And now it gets rotated, rotated again. And that bit was important because it's going to drop it down to the right level. However, um, as you can see, it lands on the side over here. So we need a belt to point it in this direction. And then it needs to land on one somewhere around here. I think that's going to put it at the right height. Is that the right height? No, that looks like the wrong height. So let's try that. Around it goes, gets rotated, drops in at the right height and goes across. Yes, so we're pretty much there now. We just need it to go, let's see, uh, just a little bit further really. Probably one of them here. And then when it's finished going along there, we need to send one back in this direction. So hopefully uh, that height right there might work and then we drop it down like that cool that might work first time but <laughs> I don't think it will I think I need to adjust it yes it needs some adjustments oh <laughs> I just started recording to say hey it's done and apparently it hasn't been painted all the way across Oh, yes, yes, of course. Silly solution. Huh. A moment ago, I was thinking, right, we'll pull it out and then we'll sort of push it back across. And then I thought, oh, we'll need a blocker over there. And I thought, oh, I could just put the blocker here. And, of course, it hasn't been painted all the way across. Right, got it. Yay, no joke this time. <laughs> it's actually working. So let's fly around and have a quick look at it all over again. Relatively easy puzzle. I think the next ones are probably going to involve some painting. And hopefully we'll be able to place the paint blocks where we would like. That would be a cool one. There we go. So pretty pretty average score really. Although we're very good at getting the block score down now. So, well, I say very good. We've learnt the basics. So that's probably why we appear over here. Um, yeah, so let's continue to the barracks. And let's look at what we've got here. Counter and painter. So both of those should be in our inventory next time. And now we've got to make a control puzzle. Puzzle? Control console. Um, down here it says solve four more puzzles above. One, two, three, four. So same as last time, um, there's five and you've got to do four of them. So we might end up skipping one if it turns out to be really tough. Let's jump into this one. And what we got going on here, let's see. We're going to use the painter. We don't have the painter in our inventory. So we've still got this like unknown block at the end, which I thought would have been the painter. Um, so we've got to build a control terminal. And it looks relatively straightforward. We've got green blocks at the back. We've got these ones every other one. We've also got like a, a corner terminal block. So depends on how these come out, I guess. We've got things on that side, things on this side. Let's listen to uh, Ortis. The overlords have been enslaving other beings for thousands of your Earth years. That is lengthy by our understanding of time. And me? Well, let's just say I'm ancient. I was enslaved by the overlords long before Salvatros was even born. I wasn't even listening to him, to be fair. So, what I first noticed is that we need 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. They're three wide, so two go to one spot, one go to another. I'm sure we're going to use the counter for that, which I was just thinking about it. Um, if we drag this out, like, and we let them... Actually, we should have used these blocks. We let them build up. And then we detect, uh, like, the one at the end. We've got three of them. We use pistons to push two off in one direction, one in the other. What's the counter going to do in that situation? It's going to count one go by, then another one. Maybe we hook it up to something that pushes a track in and redirects the next one. So I'll try and use the counter for that. But to be fair, it feels like it's not going to reduce... Um, too much space on the old method but we'll see actually no it would wouldn't it because you could have the track off in that direction and do your assembly over here and this would simply count and then when it gets its second one it could push it off the tracks and it could go in that direction that actually might be how we pull it off we might have something very small right there that does exactly that so yeah um, we would then obviously weld two of them together but we also need to mash out some of those consoles that are on there and we've also got a corner console. So what I want to see now is the rate at which these come out. We should have two of those to one of them. 
Yes, so that's not going to be an issue. So everything will probably come out at the correct rate, which means we can assemble it nice and easy. So let's pop down over here. And is it as simple as I thought it would be? If we have... Uh, yeah, that's right. Detector on that side. We'll put our piston pusher directly next to it. So it's going to push it onto that track. And let's actually make this a conveyor because we want to move things along. And how many times are you going to count? It's going to count two. So does it do two and then push off one? So let's... One. Oh, it detected both times. Fascinating. Also, the timing isn't very good as well. So if we stop that, let's increase that to four. And then continue. Now, it's also going to count the next one. No, it pushes... Right, it pushes immediately after. So what you'll probably want is this thing here. Now if I click it like that, is it going to keep the same settings as I middle clicked? It has not, so you have to configure these each time by the looks of it. So we set that one to four and then we need a conduit. Drag the conduit all the way across. That might be the right distance. Three, four. Yeah, I mean a little bit more and we'd have done it. So. Once again, this is probably not going to be quite enough. In fact, to make sure we're right, let's just go two blocks over instead of one. And then HH. And let's go. One, two. Is it me or did it count more that time? Oh, it counted three because it falls off the edge. That makes sense. Right, so that's why it messed up. One, two, three, four. Bam, off you go that direction. So that might be just how we do this little bit here. Okay, so now I'm just trying to figure out an optimal place to have these things meet one another because if we were to bring these blocks towards the middle more, they'd arrive at the same ratio, so we'd sort of have like two of these for two of these in the same space. Well, actually, no, it'd be four for two, which is kind of what we have right there, actually. But this one we got two for one. <laughs> anyway, my thinking there is just that um, if we were to bring them further across, it means we have to use more of them like this. Whereas these ones reduce block score. So there's there's so many different ways you can solve puzzles with different objectives. It's really cool. Uh, but over here I made this a little bit more efficient. So let's see it in action. You can see by stopping them here it uses less space. And less of the conveyor blocks. And it still does the same job. And it just fits into that space as well. Um, I swapped the sides so that this one would be closer to the corner unit. Okay, the next challenge is upon us, and I think as I hit record, the idea popped into my head. So initially, I was picturing using an eviscerator pointing downwards, and I realised, hey, they don't point downwards. Then I thought about using a blocker to push it downwards. Hey, they don't push downwards. So you have to push forwards into one of these, which means you'll have to use height either, well, basically lowering the blocks after you're done. So what we've got to do is push an eviscerator into um, these panels here, here, and here. So the first one that comes through is one in the middle. The second one has uh, one on that side and one on this side. And it's going to make joining them together on the corner a little bit confusing because they kind of share that middle bit. So not quite sure how that's going to work out, but I, I reckon we'll suss it out. So what I just thought was um, when this thing comes across, it is two blocks tall and then it goes forward by two blocks. At this point, it's still sort of you know on the track and then it goes into this space which is when it falls down so if an eviscerator is pointing into that spot like so it's going to destroy whatever's there now the first one that comes down let's say we go for the one in the middle it would be there and the second one um, would be one's either side so what if we were to have some of these pushes back here and they're wired up to counters that count each one coming through I, d I don't know how this is going to work. This looks so complicated, actually, now that I put it together. Um, yeah, so we want like one extended by default, but then we need the other ones to not be extended. I actually think that's going to be really difficult. We may need to separate these in order to... Yeah, that sounds so much more logical. Before they leave this place, we separate them and put them on two different tracks as well. And then the same thing for this side over here. Right, so basically we're going to separate these three times over now. We're going to have like one that goes straight, one that goes to the right, one that goes to the left, something like that. And each one falls over a different eviscerator and we won't bother with these. So here's how that comes together. Uh, this bit has been 
sort of changed around a little bit so we set them off into three different lanes and then they go down their own configuration of eviscerators like that and then they get welded at the bottom here as well by the way so that one waits until the next one comes along which will get welded and then they both move forward so at this point I think I might have set this up the wrong way but the cool thing here is we can just rearrange the eviscerators and change their configuration around if we want to do that a little bit differently same for this one over here actually because at the moment I'd have to rotate that that way move it to that side which might be an important thing actually because then that would rotate into that shape so let's say I moved this and we destroyed the two blocks on this side and rotated it that way and joined them together we would then have to rotate them twice and I think yes the shape would be completely wrong actually so what we should probably do is have these two on this side joined together and then have that one there assembled on the opposite side but then again it's the way that this one comes out here is the reason I've done that but do you know what we can do we can swap that around by simply uh, having two blocks there and then this one goes off to the side which is something I probably should have thought of earlier well here's a problem I've uh, rearranged it so if you look at how that bit goes across there and how this bit would connect to it we rotate it once we get that shape over there how do we join this corner bit though like we kind of need one of those pieces to already be over here if we're to assemble it like this which might end up being what we do um, because there's a block missing right here and we can't weld it around the corner like that so I don't know like what my solution for that is going to be and I don't think now there's no way we can sort of eviscerate it after or anything like that so yikes that is a little bit of a problem isn't it okay so what we do now is we don't weld them here but we push this one in front and then we push it out so that the other one is going to push it along <laughs> like this. They're not welded together but it's being pushed along and it's going to come over to here and look at that the timing there immaculate but now this one here is a little bit later it's going to drop into that spot and then somehow we need to like say okay it's arrived you know detect it basically and then we can retract this block here and then send it on its way now the conveyor belt is currently under it's not underneath anything <laughs> that might be a problem I need to move that over by one block then. Oh it could all go wrong here, it really could. So let's see what happens now. It just depends on when it arrives. Oh it's still good, okay excellent. So that means when we release that bit there it's going to get pushed all the way along. We can weld everything else after it, we just need to detect um, this thing falling in. So let's speed it up and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Everything that needs welding can be in this line right here. Those need welding together that needs welding together so in a straight line after this bit everything's going to go through some welders now when it comes to dropping this one in I think what we might end up doing is having a detector somewhere around here and then actually that might work <laughs> that might work just fine um, yeah I was gonna say it might be a game of timing like we drop it in and then it starts to move so we have to bring this over by one so it can fall into the correct spot as it's moving but that being said where exactly are we here we're down by one block off the side and then and then across by one so let's do that quickly while I remember that means we want to have a sensor here pointing in that direction and that's going to be hooked up to this thing here now I'm pretty sure this is going to push everything we've built off of the tracks <laughs> uh, that's my guess as to what will happen here let's put a block below that and then over here we'd have another conveyor somewhere and behind this thing I think literally is where we want to have our welders and that might be the high, entire contraption right there you know minus the bit at the end but it never rarely works that easily there's always something right so let me guess retracted for a moment yeah um, so we need a different method to stop it there and I don't know quite what's going to work to be fair Okay, I had to raise everything by one block, which is fine, because what I wanted to do was have this thing down here and uh, and sort of extend it underneath when we're ready to move it in that direction. Of course, we have to retract. Now that I say it, I realise I'm really stupid. <laughs> um, so I was thinking about how we can make this work as this thing starts to go off to the side. Because 
this doesn't uh, this thing right here let's say we move it back by one block because it doesn't um, like stay retracted by default and then extend it just means you do it from the opposite side right because it's going to be extended and then we retract it for a moment and the reason that we have to raise everything up by a block is because this doesn't work when it's on the ground which I think is a little bit silly so that in theory might be what we need to make this work it gets pushed over this thing's going to be extended we detect when it falls it extends or sorry retracts that for a moment pushes this off to the side we can then detect it over here and move it forward on this side let's hope that that works and finally it's done I hope there's no backup issues here I don't think there should be very fun challenge almost I went back to having this down on the floor back here because I thought do you know what we could use we could use a piston to push it across on this side then I realized that this thing right here moves it across by two blocks or at least I think it did. Actually, it might be that bit. But the thing is, it's got to get pulled along. Actually, it probably gets welded together. Oh, maybe I could have dropped it all down by one more block and saved a little bit on the block score. <laughs> Whatever. I'm done now. Let's speed this thing up. We've got four more to go. That was a very fun challenge. Really enjoyed that one. And I like the machine here as well. It's really cool. Made use of those new blocks as well. So footprint score, not so great. But block score was fantastic, actually. Look at that. Getting right into the top range here. And we could have reduced that as well if I hadn't had all those extra blocks because it was too high. I might come back here and, uh, and uh, you know, when I get some free time, try and improve that one for my own amusement so we can get our block score all the way down. And look, some people have done it with like a ridiculously low amount. Anyway, that was terrific fun. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. As always, thank you so much for your support and I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.